Welcome to Wisconsin Family. I'm Jessa Jeremiah. And I'm Justin Riley. And I really feel like I should be saying, what'll it be? What'll you have? <laughs> yeah, what can I get for you? What can we get for you at home? <laughs> We're standing behind the bar here at Rock and Wool Winery in Poinette. And what a fantastic place this is. This is, it's, we're indoors today. Last time we were a little bit more outdoors. Things were opened up. The weather was a little bit nicer. This is a really nice, cozy, comfy little place. Well, that's just it. It doesn't matter if you're in or out. It's, uh, we got the opportunity to explore the, the vineyard a little bit last visit mm -hmm. and couldn't, not come back for more because we right. wanted to learn more about rock and wool. These guys are great. We're going to learn a little bit about the family business. All the wines not only are made in Wisconsin, but Wisconsin grapes. I mean, it is Wisconsin through and yeah, through. Yeah, through and through. It really so is. it's really fun to learn about yeah. these folks. There's some special folks here. But yeah. we have a great show yeah. and we look forward to it. Yeah, Emily from Dog Days Grooming and Care is going to be joining us. She's going to talk about dogs in public places and being aware of what the city regulations might be depending on where you live. Yeah, great topic for families. She's going to take the guesswork out for you so you know where you can take your pup right. and even let them off the leash. Yeah. Let them run amok. That's my run favorite. Run amok. What, what favorite is a muck? A muck. It's what whatever muck. you want it to be. That's why it's so great. <laughs> we'll also be joined by Chris Martin Gilio from Martin Gilio Martial Arts. He's going to be talking about his self-defense rescripted program. It's a program designed mainly for women, but it's really for anybody. And it's it's a kind of a no frills way of defending yourself. I can't wait. That's going to be next after the break. So stick with us. Welcome back to Wisconsin Family, and we're inside today, but we are still at Rock and Wool Winery this here in Poinette. This is such a great place. I think yeah. Chris said it well. This is like the coolest it's barn the coolest ever. Coolest barn ever. <laughs> Literally the coolest <laughs> barn ever. This is Chris Martin Gilio from Martin Gilio Martial Arts. Chris, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Great. It's good. To, always good to have you here. We, we learn so much from you. You have a program that you have called um, Self-Defense Rescripted, and this is a program that's dedicated or geared mainly towards women. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is? What is Self-Defense Rescripted? Yeah. Self-Defense Rescripted is about um, changing the narrative, mm -hmm. making it so that uh, um, when somebody uh, is attacking you, they've got a plan. Mm -hmm. they've, they've picked out a victim. They say, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this is the outcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to change that. We're going to rescript that plan. As soon as they touch and they're in pain, mm -hmm. because we grab a finger, do something to them, yeah. mm -hmm. all of a sudden they don't want to be there anymore. Right. The movie script that they had in their head has been rescripted. Right. Okay. And go ahead. No, I was going to say, yeah. just follow up on that question. So uh, you're basically saying that, sadly, t attackers set out with a plan in mind. I mean, Correct. this is all very premeditated. Yeah. So they're looking for a specific, maybe someone that looks like a victim or right. is behaving in a certain way. So you've got steps, I'm imagining, to sort of, like you said, change that script. What are some things that you would do in order to change the narrative? A lot of times if there's, a, there's a touch. They're grabbing a hold of something. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I work with small children. I've worked with seniors. And so what's the easiest thing to do? What's, what can I get a hold of? If, if I grab you, you're going, oh, you're big, you're strong. I can't do that. What if you grab a hold of just my pinky? Mm -hmm. That's right. going to really hurt. You're going to get a hold of one thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We usually bend that finger back and push it in Ooh, and all of a sudden yeah, it hurts. Yeah, I can hurts. just yeah. feel the pain right. just thinking about it. And yeah. so now instead of going against an arm or a muscle or the full body weight, they're, they're able to pick on something that works. Right. I love that, that we t we've touched on this before, but I think it's really important because the type of self-defense that you teach isn't for strength against strength. Correct. It's for, you know, any person, right. size doesn't matter, size age doesn't, doesn't matter, matter yeah. to be able to defend themselves right. in a tough situation. And building on that same topic, you've recently worked with some seniors, mm -hmm. nurses, mm -hmm. all kinds of different folks that you work with right. that probably don't have some real big physical strength. Right. What's the benefit to them? What kinds of things are you doing with them? Well, with the hospice workers, we were talking about people with dementia. And we don't. We know that they're not trying to hurt the nurses or anyone else. But you can't allow them to hurt you, so you have to find a way to help them. To, so we could think about it. So you're grabbing hold of me. I could uh -huh. help your arm down and, you know, and, mm -hmm. and stop you from doing this. 
nicely. Right. I don't want to have to bam and hit you. Right, yeah. That's not what I'm after. Mm -hmm. Right. I need to stop that arm from doing it, and so I need to find a way. And so I have to use those principles. The same ones we'd use for self-defense can be applied to a humane tactic. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then I don't have to hurt you, but I can stop you from hurting yourself mm -hmm. or from hurting myself. That's really interesting because that's a whole nother realm. I mean, you're dealing with somebody then who isn't necessarily uh, an attacker. Right. It, you've got some, maybe some problems or some yeah. issues and that has to be dealt with in a little bit different manner. It has to be dealt with in a totally different manner. Um, I worked special education for a lot of years in the school district and we had kids that were violent and disruptive and I am not going to hurt a child Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to let him hurt another child. I'm not going to let him hurt himself. Right. So I've had to get a hold of kids before and in a very humane manner, without injury, without mm -hmm. any kind of, uh, um, we, we think the karate is about assault. It's not about right. that. It's not what we're doing. You know, we have to stop somebody from hurting themselves and, and, and that's, that's what we teach. And you have a great website with some great video and a great YouTube oh, yeah. channel as well. Right. And there's some demonstrations on there where, you know, a lot of times people think of the Hoo! Right. when they think martial arts. <laughs> well, I know. They you know? Do. And right. I, too it, many movies. Right, right. There's too many movies. And, but it really doesn't have to be that way. No. It can be a lot more simple. And the, the bottom line is, is if, if it protects you, right. then it works. Well, no one will ask us anytime soon to get into any movies because we're not fancy. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it works. It doesn't look like we did anything. Yeah. And so they don't they don't want us in the uh, in the movies. Right. You know, right. because it's just like what did you do? That doesn't work. they want the big movements. Sure. And so not that's flashy, what, it's right. not showing. And so that's what people think that this is and mm -hmm. it, it's not. It's it's really about right. enabling uh, a 60-year-old woman or an 80-year-old woman or a 5-year-old child or to be able to do something. Right. And and not have to worry about well I'm not strong enough. Sure. Or I can't kick above my head. Sure. And you mentioned, you know, 60-year-old uh, women and so forth. I mean, is this something that could be open to, to anybody? I mean, because certainly yeah. there's probably men out there who yeah. feel like they could use a lesson in self-defense. When, when I worked with the uh, Milwaukee uh, uh, police, I was, I was working with a small group of people that were uh, uh, defense and arrest tactics practitioners, and mm -hmm. we were teaching them the rescripted program. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. They're going, why don't we have this information? Right. And, and it's, it's just different, you know? It's not what they're thinking of when they need to arrest somebody that they would use a finger mm -hmm. to get somebody down. Right. And handcuff them without having to use more force. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot of it. I had a, a seven-year-old woman that wrote me an email that said, I thought that this was going to be a violent class. Right. And I can do everything you taught. Right. Uh, and I, I was like, oh, thank you, you know, right. to, to get that kind of feedback from somebody of that age. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's really for everyone. Right. Wheelchair bound or, or perfect health, doesn't matter. Right. We got everything from the worst to the best and in between. So, and you've got some other great classes there, including yeah. Tai Chi that you uh, yeah. that you offer. I would encourage you to check out their website. Check out his website. This is Chris Martin Gilio from Martin Gilio Martial Thank Arts. Thank you so much Thanks, for joining Chris. us today. Right. Nice Thank to you. See you. Don't go away. There's more Wisconsin Family coming up right here at Rock and Roll Winery on Channel 57. Don't go away. Welcome back to Wisconsin Family. We're having a great time here at Rock and Wool Winery in Poinette. It's a beautiful day no matter what. It's a little cloudy today, but it's a beautiful day no matter what. Yeah, but this, what time we're inside coming. today and yeah. it's such a cool space. We're going to chat with those folks a little later. Looking we forward certainly to are. It. And Emily Ruzica joins us again. You were here last time we were at Rock and Wool. Do I sense a trend? Is that on purpose? That's Maybe. No, no, no accident. Is it <laughs> no accident, no. I was happy to come out here. Again. It's quite nice. It's a different space we're in today. It's beautiful. So yes. Emily joins us from Dog Days Grooming and Care. And we're going to talk a little bit today about dogs in public places. Um, do rules vary, you know, depending on, you know, what municipality that you're in, you know, if you're in Madison versus DeForest versus Wanakee, as far as dogs being allowed in public places? Right. So there's a couple of different things I wanted to hit here. Um, one being typically in all cities, you need to have a dog on a leash. Mm -hmm. um, that's for everybody's safety, for everybody's well-being, uh, especially a dog, because you know we're in a city and there's roads and cars and things like that. Right, so yeah. Um, typically, yeah, the rules are across the board that you need to have your dog on a leash. Um, a little bit different though, depending on what kind of public space you're in when it's a green space. So sure. um, there's different kinds of parks. There's city parks, county parks. I can't speak to all the surrounding areas because I'm not as familiar with the, with the rules, but I did bring a list so we could let people know 
the difference of the rules within different kinds of parks. Yeah, I think that'd be great for folks, dog owners, pet owners at home who, you know, maybe don't know what to do and you've taken the research out of it for us. So talk to us a little bit about what what parks can we go to and it's they're dog friendly, they can run amok. Yeah, yeah exactly. So <laughs> typically in Madison parks, and I'll just speak to that because that's where I grew up and that's where I live and I'm most uh, familiar with, but in Madison parks, typically you're going to see a big sign there that says, dogs not allowed or on the sign many many parks say dogs allowed but must be on a six foot leash or mm -hmm. less so your dog can be with you your dog could be running and playing with you but it needs to be still able to be under voice control and, and actually attached to you by a six foot leash that's typically a madison park rundown but there is a list that I brought of a couple of Madison parks that allow uh, either have areas that are off leash dog park oh. areas within the park or the whole park is off leash. Wow. And that's the actual statement is called, this is an off leash dog park. So um, in Madison proper, I brought this list, like I said, there is Quan Park, which is over by the Coliseum. Okay. Uh, Sycamore Park, which is out on the far east side of Madison. Uh, Walnut Grove Park, which I'm sorry, I don't know exactly where that is. I think it's West Side. It's West Side. Yeah. West Side. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, West Sider. Um, there is Warner Park, which is north. That's very, very nice. That borders some water, so your dog's get a chance to swim. Although it can be a little mucky and marshy, depending. Uh, Bring a stinky dog. Yeah, yeah it depends on the time of year. But yeah, I've had a dog go in blonde and come out black. Sometimes. Oh my gosh. So it's just yeah. how, you know, you want to be aware of if your dog is a swimmer, <laughs> likes to chase water stuff, just be aware of that there. Yeah. Uh, but it's a beautiful park. Also, Brittingham Park, which is south, that's uh, right off Proudfit, um, near downtown. Demetral Park, that's north again. Um, McCormick Park, which I believe, believe is east as well. And then Odana School Park, which is out west. So that means there's gonna be rules that are posted that says your dog can be off a leash um, mm. in certain areas, and they're pretty clear about it. So it's nice to know, because you don't want to end up, unfortunately, getting a ticket in a park that doesn't allow that, because right. you want your dog to run. How fun for the dogs. Yeah. You know, I can just imagine that moment. You release the leash, and yeah. oh, off they, they go. go. You get the hand on by the collar, and tinkle, you know, and they know, and they're just ready, so <laughs> yeah. That's a fun, I like it. So this is City of Madison. Right. Um, can you talk about some surrounding areas? Are there places uh, that dogs are allowed in surrounding areas? Yeah, so again, I'm familiar mostly with uh, Dane County, which is where my business resides, and that's mm -hmm. one of the parks that we are which is, um, well, we call it Cherokee Marsh, but it's actually technically called Yahara Heights, and that's mm -hmm. between Madison and Wanakee off Highway 113. Um, and there's just a little snippet of information I pulled off their website. It said Dane County Parks was one of the first park systems in the nation to develop off-leash dogs exercise areas, which I think is pretty cool. That's I didn't cool. know that. So yeah, so yay for Dane County. Um, the other ones quickly are Badger Prairie, Capital Springs Recreation Area, Indian Lake, Prairie Marine, Token Creek, Viking Park, and then the Yahara Heights. So that's seven of them that have either off-leash dog areas for full running or the whole place is off-leash. So it's all for dogs. Like Yahara Heights, it's fenced. You go in, your dog's free to run as long as it's under voice sure. control. So just some education out there for dog owners if they need a place to go to get the dogs. Yeah. Wiley's out to those are the yeah. places. <laughs> so other fun things, of course, for dogs are coming to Dog Days Grooming and Care. It's a vacation for the pups. So yeah. you get to send them there and they have a nice time. Yeah. But you always come prepared with a great story. And I love that because it's my favorite part about talking to you. So <laughs> tell us your story about Spot and share with folks at home. Okay, so my family out there watching this already knows this story and it's kind of silly, but um, if anyone's familiar with like the Walmart greeter, which mm -hmm. was like the person that you come into Walmart and they say, hello, welcome, you know, that's just kind of a, a, an idea when you think about this story is the Walmart greeter. So I have a terrier named Spot. He hasn't been on the show since way in the beginning because mm -hmm. sometimes where we film, they don't allow dogs, but he's been on camera quite a bit. He's in the commercials and stuff. And he is a terrier who, um, terriers can be a little bit more sassy, I'll just put it that way. And so sometimes their greeting is a little more um, intense. <laughs> hello, 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 versus like, oh, hey, how you doing? Which a different breed might do. So at dog days, he started it with me. He was there from the beginning. So his idea of welcoming was sometimes very intense in that way. So right. we would just say that he was the worst Walmart greeter ever and didn't right. necessarily <laughs> represent the welcoming feeling I always wanted in my business. And so one day I left, uh, for work to go open dog days and spot slept in and didn't make it. Mm -hmm. And so he, uh, my husband jokes that he <laughs> wandered down the street and <laughs> was seen waiting for the bus to come to dog days <laughs> because I left him behind because he's not a good Walmart greeter. Oh, so man. that's a story, Poor it's spot. a little embellished, but if yeah. anyone knows spot, they'll appreciate right. that. Yeah, <laughs> so shout out to spot. Shout out to spot, exactly. <laughs> Really quick before we go, Emily, I, wanna, I want you to give, have a chance to talk about your first time special. Oh, that's uh, typically just in case nobody remembers. Uh, first daycare day to try out is always free. Mm -hmm. So that's just oh, something good nice. to know out there. Yep. Very cool. First time free. Yeah. Yep. Emily Ruzika from Dog Days Grooming and Care. Thanks so much for joining us today. And don't go away. There is more Wisconsin family coming up right after this. Stick Thank around. you.
Welcome back to Wisconsin Family. We've been hanging out here at Rock and Roll Winery having a fabulous time. What a better, what a, there's no better spot too. I know. We're behind the bar. We're behind the bar. Last <laughs> time we were here, we got a fabulous tour throughout the winery and the vineyard was absolutely beautiful. So we came back, we had a lovely time and now we're joined by a couple of guests or rather you're having us as your <laughs> guests, I should mm -hmm. say. This is Rachel Peters, event coordinator here at Rock and Wool Winery and Pete Gower, assistant wine drinker, no, maker here. Both. Oh, both. Both. <laughs> and both. Rock and Wool <laughs> Winery. So glad to see you. Thank you so much for hosting us. We love coming. Thanks for coming oh, out. It's nice to have you here. So this is such a special place. Justin and I have really enjoyed learning more about this business. A fantastic family business and I mean it doesn't get more Wisconsin than this. Wisconsin wines made right here. I think it's just great. I'm glad folks at home can get to discover you even more. But what do you think makes Rock and Wool special? I think just because of the fact that we use only grapes that grow in Wisconsin, we don't have any concentrate, so I think mm -hmm. that makes us unique. Absolutely. We have a lot of people that just really yes. enjoy our wine. Yeah, well, I mean, that is really unique, and that's really part mm -hmm. of the part of the fun and some of the things that you get to see when you do take a tour out through is right. get to see the whole process start to finish. It's really Yeah, special. I mean, you get to see the grapes growing on the vine, and mm -hmm. you get to, we, last time we were here, we got to ride up and down through the grape vines and everything, and that was a lot of fun. Right, so. absolutely. And it's so unique to think about grapes being grown in Wisconsin. It's not innate to think that that would no. make a good wine. Can they survive here in Wisconsin? Oh, can yes, they can. Can you even get to that <laughs> <laughs> the master is behind it all right here. So you've, uh, you've been open for a little while now. Um, what has been the response of the visitors that you've, you've had here so far? Oh, they, uh, we do tours, mm -hmm. the wagon tours, which you did. Uh, and we do tours down in the basement where we make the wine. And they, they love that. Absolutely. And uh, just to come here, and uh, it's a free tasting, so it doesn't cost any money. But they just, the atmosphere, you can go outside and sit out there, have a bottle of wine. You know, we open it up for you, you go out there, or you can uh, just have a glass. But it's, uh, it's real, it's, it's family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the thing that Sean puts out, it's family. And we're yeah. all treated, even though we're not blood relation we to are. Sean. We are, we're all treated as family. We are family. Yeah. yeah. And yep. this is, uh, what, I've, what I've noticed about this place, you know, we, we came here last time, you know, it was a little sunnier than it is today, and we got to ride outside and, and do some things outside, mm -hmm. and it was open, the barn was open and everything. But I kind of like this place, too, because it's cozy. It is. You know, it, you feel like a closeness to the people that you're mm -hmm. around. Yes. All the guests that have joined us today, too, for interviews have made mention of that, of how beautiful this space is and mm -hmm. how welcoming it is and really warm. So yeah. talk about that a little bit from your perspective, just from, like you said, working here and being kind of part of the family. What do you, what does your sort of day-to-day -day look like or some of your favorite things about working here? One of my favorite things is, is you know, when you do a tasting, excuse me, <laughs> everybody is just excited. They're happy to be here, you mm -hmm. know, so it just makes my job a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think that's great. And, you know, when people come uh, for a visit, you had mentioned, Pete, that they get free wine tasting. You know? Right. Uh, what are some of the other things that they can expect when they come here? Well, they're treated like family, just like we're right. treated, you yeah. know. And it's, uh, it's an experience uh, because this is a 100-year-old barn, mm -hmm. and a lot of them love that, that aspect of this barn. Yeah. And a lot of this uh, decoration here was done with family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... That's yeah, great. we had at least two of our guests come in and just look, they walked in and they saw the space out there and said, this is the coolest barn ever. <laughs> yeah, direct quote, actually. Yeah. 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 Um, quote. yeah, and if the wine weren't enough, I mean, you had me at $10 pizzas, but yeah. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about uh, Ladies Night, too. Yes, yeah, so we really just started that. Night. We had our third week this week. Um, we offer $4 glasses of wine, and then we do, uh, from 4 to 8, we do our cheese and crackers. Um, chocolate, dark chocolate always goes oh well gosh. with wine. Mm. <laughs> um, we do have music from 5.30 to 8, so live music, just, it's just a lot of fun. That, I don't Ladies think you could, I think you've named all of the wonderful <laughs> things in life in one sentence. So you get to have some wine, some cheese crackers, dark chocolate music. I mean, yeah, it's just a perfect a lovely, setting. Yeah, yeah, a lovely picture. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like a lot of fun for ladies. And what is, I'm curious to know, because you guys obviously have a, a stake in the outcome, so to speak, here. You are, um, you are involved in the winemaking process. Right. Um, what is your favorite? What is your oh, favorite yeah. thing that I have here? It's so hard to pick. Yeah. There, being up here is fun. It is, meeting yeah. the people. But downstairs, I think one of the most fun things is we're all together when we do the bottling. Mm -hmm. We'll do it some evening, we're not open. And we go down there and we 
I take care of the music. It's all 80s. It's uh, AC/DC. <laughs> and all right. I was you know. going to ask. That was my next question. What right. music do you are the wine well, making yeah. happening to? Let me it's, see if I have that, my resume. That could affect. <laughs> could affect the outcome. Yeah. Well, we have a uh, we have rock, okay. 80s rock, and yeah. that's that's what we like. But uh, we're joking around constantly down there, and it's a lot of fun. There's one one guy really is on the the bottler. Uh, the filler mm -hmm. on his case constantly yeah. because sometimes he leaves the work area. Yeah. I don't know who that is, but it, it could be me. <laughs> but uh, it could be but the one thing, be, one thing be. about the bottling is we're all friends. Mm -hmm. But you get, uh, we don't go down there and press a button and watch the bottle go down a conveyor belt. Right. Uh, it's every bottle has a personal touch. Everybody has uh, whether a spot. the filler, yep. filler person filling, and the corking, and the capsuling, and then the, the labeling, and then to the case, and then up to the cooler. So it's the personal each bottle gets. Yeah. Really special. And I mean, I think that makes a, a big difference when you're talking about the outcome of a wine, too, because mm -hmm. you've got basically a group of people that get together that feel like family, act like family, and have fun in the process. This mm -hmm. isn't all about, you know, production. It's it's right. really about a special process to make some really great tasting wines that you can enjoy, and you have the opportunity then to share with others. And that's really wonderful. It's a very beautiful story in a beautiful space. It's truly an experience to come out here. And that yes, experience, that, that closeness that you guys have really spills out to your guests that you, you invite Pours. as well. Pours. <laughs> Pours. Pours. That's a good word. Pours, Pours, Pours out to our guests. And I think one of your favorite or our favorites right now is Randy Old Goat. <laughs> There's <laughs> a story. Mind, There's a, yeah. <laughs> well, I maybe pick on the boss once in a while, but he gets even <laughs> in a big time. But at least he put a great wine in that bottle. <laughs> there yeah. you go. And, I love uh, it. That's one of my favorites, and, and Stature is another one that I like a lot. Good. He kind of turned me into a wine snob. I like the he dry He turned us rinse. all into wine snobs. It's a good place to be when you're making wines <laughs> you for the bet. rest of you us, bet. so I think that's great. Before we go, if you had to, this is a tough question, so I apologize in advance. See if you can sum up Rock and Wool Winery in a sentence. What, what do you think you would say? Oh, wow. So oh, wow. Say, oh, wow. That's, 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 that's it, yeah. That's it. <laughs> that would be it. it. You know, it's the people. Um, all, the, all of us that work here, basically, we didn't even know each other. And now we're friends. I mean, uh, her husband, Dave, works here, too. He helps and, out a lot on the weekends. On the weekends and stuff. And uh, so I've got to know him, her two daughters. So uh, we went golfing together, you know. So it. it Beyond this, it moves farther. Well, very good. So thank mm -hmm. you so much for sharing that. This is a special place with special people and some very special wine that we hope you at home try out and come visit because it's a great spot to be. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. We thank very you. much thank you. appreciate it. Rachel and Pete here from Rock and Wool Winery. I want to also thank all of our guests for joining us today on Wisconsin Family. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Every day is a new beginning. Shine your light. It's a day and the world is waiting. Move along to the song singing in your soul Feel the beat, clap your hands, let it take control oh.